the Zemisi, mentally ill, very mentally twisted vampires. The Zemisi, like many clans within Vampire the Masquerade, they have a progenitor, an antediluvian as they call them, a creator of the clan. In the Zemisi case specifically, they refer to their antediluvian as the eldest. And he also goes by the same name as the entire clan, so that's not confusing at all. Zemisi the eldest, he became consumed on a quest to follow the path of metamorphosis and see what he could accomplish. Zemisi achieved a near zen-like state, becoming one with everything, or at least almost. Now the Zemisi clan, they claim that their heritage can be traced all the way back to the first vampire Cain ever created, Enoch. However, if the Book of Nod is to be believed, there is some dispute to that claim. Now there are two conflicting tales in the origins of the Zemisi. The first comes from the Book of Nod and it's referred to as the Legend of Irad. Now this legend says, at some point, Irad the Strong decided to purge himself of all evil. He was a master of the Protean discipline, and this discipline allows vampires to change shape. They can grow feral claws. They can even dissolve into mist if they really wanted to. Irad then gathered all of the evilness inside of him, and he congealed it into one disgusting mass. Now what Irad thought was that if he was to get a mortal to consume this disgusting mass that contained all of his evil essence, that he could destroy his evilness and he could destroy the mortal. I mean, who cares about human life when you're a vampire anyways? The problem with this approach was that he anticipated something terrible to happen, and it didn't. At least not right away. After this human had consumed this horrible, gelatinous blob of disgusting evilness, Nothing happened. The mortal remained just the same. This intrigued Irad so much that he decided to turn this mortal into a vampire, make him one of his childer, just to see what it would become. And this is how the Zemisi antediluvian Zemisi was born. Now in a different version of events, the Library of the Forgotten, it says that Yonosh the Lawgiver, Yonosh was another name for Enoch, it says that he was attracted to some qualities in a human. The human that he was going to embrace was very wise. He had lots of insight that he wanted to gain access to. And in the process of this embrace, Enoch took everything within him and put it into the vitae that he used to turn this mortal into a vampire or one of his childer. And instead of being a horrible mass of evilness that was consumed by Zemisi, this story states that he was instead purer than the rest of his brethren because he was embraced with the most pure vitae. And only by being as pure as he was could he master the cruelest parts of vampirism. Now before we move on to what Zemisi was like as a person in his mortal life, let me know in the comments below which story you think is true. And while you're down there, if you wouldn't mind hitting the like button, that would be fantastic. And if you want to see more lore videos around World of Darkness, subscribing will make sure you get them. Now, Zemisi counts himself as being one of the first or among the first antediluvians. And the term antediluvian generally refers to any vampire created before the Great Flood, but in most cases it refers to the third generation of vampires, the original clan founders. Zemisi never really fit in with his brethren, and he kept himself secluded because of this. In these days, vampires were very, very powerful, and there was no real room for growth. They were already at the pinnacle of vampirism. Now, Zemisi, on the other hand, when he was mortal, he was an oracle in his mortal life. Pondering the existentialness of life, he was not happy being tethered to his mortal form for eternity, so he started looking for ways to improve his form or that of the vampire itself. He wanted to find a way to free himself from his thirst, and unfortunately he never was able to do that. At this point, Zemisi exiled himself from the first city. Most of the third generation were embraced or created within the first city, and they were created without the blessing of Cain, the OG vampire, the original mortal cursed by God for killing his brother, Abel. Towards the decline of the first city, things were getting pretty bad there. Mortals were starting to fight back. They were tired of being used as resources, and they were trying to purge the city of evil. 
vampires were fighting amongst themselves for the limited resources and to start controlling territories, all while trying to gain favor from Cain, who was absent during this point. And then, of course, the signs and omens started appearing of the incoming flood, the biblical event where God flooded the earth. Now, Zemisi, the antediluvian, he went east. He was siring children, but not because he wanted a clan, because he wanted research experiments to see what he could do with the vampire form. There is a tale that circulated within the current elders of the Zemisi clan in modern day. The younger generation referred to them as the old clan. This is because they did not join the Sabbat and they did not practice the vicissitude discipline. The old clan tale goes that Zemisi walked to the earth before the flood, but he found a city of mortals who were worshiping infernal gods. And being curious, he decided to join them and learn of their rituals. However, the rituals that he discovered left him wanting, and he decided to take them under his wing, so to speak, and educate them or enlighten them. And this is potentially how we end up with the Bali clan. So thanks, Zemisi. Zemisi would eventually set up a new home in Transylvania where he would be abandoned by his royal guards. In Zemisi's wandering, he ended up at Transylvania, or what would be Transylvania in the future. In this place, he met an entity called Kupala. Kupala had been sealed in this area by the werewolves, and although Zemisi had a very difficult time getting it freed, he was able to do so. Shortly after this time, the Great Flood, or the Deluge, happened, and Zemisi offered his mountaintops to fleeing mortals, but the price of admittance was being a, a blood bag, basically. As we move forward in time a little bit, the stories go that Salubri, or the leader of the Salubri, Samuel, who was Childer of Zaulot, challenged Zemisi in his lair, his actual home. Stories go that Samuel won, but it ended up in a draw since both of them were dead at the end of this. Now, Zemisi's personal guard, the Bogatiri, they disappeared after his death. While Zemisi's body was destroyed, his essence was not, and he was able to piece himself back together, at least in a smaller version of himself, a, a small baby Zemisi. When found, he was brought to the Cathedral of Flesh, and it was in this location that Zemisi was tended to by Yorak. And in this time of regrowth or rebuilding oneself, Zemisi listened to Kupala and learned much from the other worlds. Now, the Cathedral of Flesh was the main base for the Zemisi clan. It was located in the Carpathian Mountains, but during the Dark Ages, it disappeared. And Yorak was the Methuselah who created the Cathedral of Flesh in the first place. Legends go that the Cathedral disappeared because it consumed itself and its creator. And during the time that the cathedral existed, Yorak was the de facto leader. He had sent word to the Bogatiri, the original defenders of Zemisi. However, they didn't come back. Now, it wouldn't be for a very long time until Zemisi would be found by someone completely by accident. 1232 AD, to be exact. A young Koldunism practicer, he found a manifestation of Zemisi in the form of a tree. Elias was the name of the man who found the tree, and when he rested against it, he said that he heard the voice of God. Now, this wouldn't have been God, it would have been Zemisi, and when he fell asleep, they tried to communicate with each other through dreams. Now, the problem was, Elias was not able to understand Zemisi, and he couldn't dumb himself down enough to be understood. But when Elias woke up, he had a red seed in his possession. Elias would go on to consume or eat the seed that he was given, and Zemisi would possess his body. While he was possessed by Zemisi, he would then be used to kill Marcus Musa Giovanni, one of the older childer of the Giovanni clan. Now, unfortunately, Elias' body was not able to withstand the being that was possessing him, and it would eventually burn up and turn to ash. Now, nothing would happen with the Zemisi Antediluvian until the 15th century, and it's here where we're introduced to a interesting World of Darkness character who will probably get his own video. And I'm probably going to pronounce his name wrong, so tell me about it below. Lambach Ruthven. The Anarchs at this point, they had been raging a massive war and crushing all of their opponents. And the leader of the Anarchs at this point was Lugoj, also known as the Bloodbreaker. 
He used Lambach to help find the Zemisi Antediluvian. Now, Lambach tends to know lots of things. He was one of the original childer of Zemisi himself. It's too bad that while he was bred for a specific purpose in his history, he just never fulfilled it. But Lambach has been part of many important events within vampire history. Now, Bloodbreaker had destroyed the La Sombra Antediluvian, and it seemed like the Anarchs were unstoppable at this point. And he was now seeking to destroy Zemisi, the clan antediluvian. Reports suggested that Zemisi himself was in a state of torpor and would be an easy target. As easy as an antediluvian can be when they're sleeping. This was not the case. Zemisi was awake. He was not sleeping. He was awake. And it didn't take much effort to destroy Lugoj in this process. Zemisi then used his fleshcraft ability to take on the shape of Lugoj. Zemisi then played a trick on everyone who was there, and it worked on everyone except for Lombok. All who were there believed that Lugoj diablerized Zemisi. This was all just an elaborate con, mind you. Lugoj was already dead. And although Lombok saw the entire thing, he said nothing. This elaborate ruse was helped along by the Zentasa family. The Zentasa are a family of ghouls who typically have worked alongside the Zemisi, providing information, being eyes and ears. Once this had been done, the Zentasa family transported Zemisi, or Lugoj, back to what would become New York, and here, Zemisi entered a state of metamorphosis. His body basically dissolved into a puddle of slime. It transformed into fungi and then went on to seep into plants and animals. As animals ate the grass and the plants, it spread. And as other animals consumed each other, Zemisi's presence spread. This was one way for Zemisi to explore the infinitude of life. And this is how he achieved his Zen-like state, becoming one with everything. As his presence grew, his Vitae changed. He was able to draw power from the earth itself. Zemisi was attempting to master creation and take control of it. And this challenge proved to be greater than he expected it to be. And he did not find the answers to questions that he had about his form and how to improve it. And at some point, Zemisi started pulling himself back, pulling himself out of the earth and out of creation. And he took back his original form, and this would have been finished somewhere in the 21st century. Now, if you'd like to learn a little bit more about the Zemisi, I have a video on the screen about the clan, less about the actual founder of it. Thank you to all of my supporters over on Patreon. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more World of Darkness, then hit subscribe. My name's Nathaniel. Thanks for stopping by, everyone.